When you think about the differences between cold brew and espresso, there are quite a few, but the two big ones are brew time and temperature, with cold brew generally taking 18 to 24 hours, and espresso 18 to 24 seconds, and of course, brewing temperatures ranging from room to just under boiling. And sitting right smack dab in the middle between these two very disparate brew methods is the brand new Osma. This boxy little contraption claims to produce fresh and well-extracted cold brew in as little as 60 seconds, without the use of hot water or traditional pressure application. Instead, it uses a process called acoustic cavitation to achieve a better extraction without the use of hot water. Which, according to their website, means the pump creates oscillating pressures that resonates inside the coffee bed, which then creates bubbles that exert shearing forces against the ground coffee, resulting in extraction and leading to that familiar layered espresso appearance and creamy texture. Now, in my mind, this does sort of make sense, especially after reading the explanation on their website and looking at their diagrams, but I'm not really here to delve into the science of it, but what I really want to know is, does it make a good cup of coffee? Personally, I don't love cold brew, but I am all about espresso. So the question is, can the Osma do a good job at marrying these two very different styles of extraction? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. But really quick, just a little disclosure. The folks at Osmo were kind enough to send me this unit for my review and feedback. As always, no promises or payments were made, and this review, like all reviews, is purely influenced by my own experience with the Osmo. As you likely guessed after seeing the Osmo, brewing coffee on it is more or less like brewing just a regular espresso. It does utilize an included 58mm portafilter and group which means you can use all those wild barista tools, commercial baskets, and screens. It also comes with a distribution tool that's intended to be used as both a leveler and a tamper. And the workflow is, of course, pretty familiar. Dose, grind, distribute, lock in, and brew. And for those who are curious, the pucks actually knock out pretty cleanly, considering the light tamp and the recommended 25 gram dose. But within the process, you'll still need to dial in your grind and make some adjustments to the brew depending on your tastes and how it extracts. Of course, the same rules apply when it comes to most, if not all, forms of brewing, but the Osma does bring a couple unique differences to the table. You can manipulate the pump on and off for pre-infusion and blooming, or just go straight in with full pressure. You also have control over how you brew, using fresh water pulled from a separate container, or recirculating from the same glass you're brewing into, both of which create a very different cup of coffee, which leads me into the next topic. Now that we know how the Osma actually functions and brews, the next natural topic we should get into is how the coffee it brews actually tastes. First up, let's talk about brewing by weight using the fresh water method which is more or less a cold press espresso. It produces coffee that layers and resembles a traditional espresso shot. The shots have an intense flavor, a nice texture, and a little bit of foam on top. But unlike hot brewed coffees, it lacks a lot in terms of complexity, and it seems the likelihood of sourness is pretty high regardless of extraction percentage. When it comes to testing the extraction yields, I found it pretty low when brewed in a traditional 1 to 2 ratio, around 14 to 15%. But when you move into longer pulls, 1 to 3 plus, you can pull out extractions well into the 18 to 20 percent range. Now let's talk about the recirculating brew method. Personally, I found these more appealing in terms of flavor, as they can be pretty well balanced and a little more complex. Plus, you can control the strength without the risk of watering it down, since you're essentially brewing coffee with brewed coffee. But on top of the flavor differences, it should be noted that cold or room temperature extractions are a different beast altogether. Not only does it extract differently in terms of flavor, but the flow tends to be the opposite of a standard espresso, where they often begin slow and then speed up. On the other hand, the Osma begins with a burst and then slows down, which I think is likely due to the vibrations causing a good amount of fines migration in the basket. Now, let's talk about where I think the Osma falls short, and to start, it vibrates. A lot. This of course creates a good amount of noise even when on a padded surface. And your cup may even try to escape. Also, the internal pump mechanism retains quite a bit of liquid, 
which is less of an issue with fresh water poles, but if you're using recirculation, you'll want to flush the group with fresh water, or else you'll end up getting retained coffee from the last brew. On the topic of retention, that retained water or coffee after a brew will slowly leak out of the straw, so you'll want to leave a towel or a cup under it after you brew, or you'll end up with a mess on your counter. Since brew water is being pulled from external sources using straws, you'll need to make sure they are seated well or you'll end up getting a weird bubbly extraction. And 20 to 25 grams of wasted coffee. I found the seating of the straws pretty finicky and needed to be checked and double checked shot to shot. I wanted to really like the Osma, I really did. But honestly, I find myself pretty underwhelmed. I mean, it does what it's designed and advertised to do, and I had some decent shots and cups from it overall. But for something that costs $700, I just expected more from it, in terms of the little things, the fit and finish. The unstable straw connections, retained water in the pump mechanism, and the potential mess and inconvenience from that, and just the overall function from it feels very much DIY versus a refined commercial retail product which in some cases can even be charming, but at this price point, I don't feel that way. Maybe if it were a third of that price, I could see myself shrugging it off as supporting innovation. But if I had spent my own hard-earned money on it, I'd be pretty disappointed. That said, I do feel conflicted, because Ozma is a small, independent company that seems like they're trying to innovate, and I've got nothing but respect for that. They've also been very kind and quick to respond in our communications, which is something I can't say for every company. But brewing espresso with cold water feels more like a novelty, or at best, something seasonal. Not something that will catch on in any sort of meaningful, massive way. But I've been wrong before, so... And in my opinion, brewing with hot water just brings out so much more from the coffee. More nuanced flavor, more texture, and generally better extractions. But like I said multiple times through this video, this is just one person's take. This is all my opinion, and I've seen the Ozma on the bars of other creators, so if you're in the market for one, check out and see what other people are saying before making any decision. And on that note, I'm going to wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. Have you ever tried cold-pressed espresso, or are you an early adopter of the Ozma? If you are, I want to know what your experience has been like. Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.